Welcome back to Paddy's Golf Tips. We're going to talk about trying to play golf with injuries. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Podrick Harrington. First and foremost, if you have an injury, do go to see a physiotherapist, a doctor, get it checked out. I am not in any shape or form saying you should play golf with injuries, but I'm talking about if you have an injury and you continue to play, how do you handle that? Generally, it's by increasing movement, believe it or not. So let's talk. I think nearly every golfer has a choke point in their body that seems to repetitively get injured. So for me, I've always had trouble with my neck and I've had tennis elbow. So I had two choke points, but everybody, some, like I've never had a problem with my lower back, touch wood. There's a lot of people who have lower backs or will have knee or will have a hip, might have a foot. Every golfer seems to have a point that takes all that pressure. All the G-force in the body seems to hit one point and it, it locks up. So I would say to anybody, identify your problem area and tackle it off the golf course. You've got you to go physio. Get some treatment, get it diagnosed, get the symptoms, not just where it's hurting, but it could be coming from somewhere else. Get yourself a program and work at it. Now, this is part of it. If you have a problem like me, say in this area in my neck, there's no point in me doing somebody else's program that takes, say, 20 minutes in the morning of stretching. I'm better off doing five minutes, about say 10 minutes of general stretching and then 10 minutes focused on my problems. So at least half your stretching should be focused on your area that you're particularly tight in. Yes, do some general motion and, and warm-ups or whatever it is you do, but at least half it should be in your area. You should probably do it twice a day and you should break it down into exercises that maybe only take a minute so that if you're waiting on your cup of coffee at Starbucks, you can actually do the exercise. Okay, so make it short. I, I know myself to get my exercise done. I get out of my bed in the morning, I do my exercises straight away. And before I go to bed at night, I do my exercises because it has to be a habit. But I keep it short. You know, when I, you know, at a tournament, those exercises might take 30 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. But at home, no more than 10 minutes because I know I won't do it. So keep it short and focus on your area of problem. Okay, now let's get back to the actual swinging. They say, do see a doctor, do get a physio. But if you're struggling, there's things you can do. So the most common one is lower back pain, okay? And the amount of people who, who get treated for lower back pain and they go back playing golf because they love it, but the golf is actually part of the problem or causing the problem or not sorting it out anyway, not allowing it to go away. So the golf swing, as I said, with all the power and you're kind of jammed in here and you, you even see the new young guys are like over here with side bend and... Like, wow, could you imagine trying to do all that? Gosh, you're back. But yes, you get jammed into this position. And it's, if you've got a problem in your low back, it's going to keep hurting. So very simple drill. Gary Player has used this on the golf course in tournaments. I've used it in tournaments. When you hit the golf ball, the last thing we want to do is get stuck into this lovely position here. It's going to hurt your back if you have a problem. So you just release it. And this will help your golf game, which won't do you any harm. And just walk after So now I have zero pressure on my back there. I've just basically hit it and stepped. I could have done a better job than that. I haven't done it in a while. I'm going to do it one more time. Just like so. It's not going to affect the golf shot and it's just taking all the pressure. There's no squeezing. I've taken all the pressure off, okay? That's definitely, if you've got a problem with your back, lower back, that's a great one. If you've got a problem with your neck, okay, do not keep your head down. It's bad for your golf swing anyway to keep your head down, so certainly don't do it if you're gonna have a problem with your neck. So we don't want to do struggle with your shoulders. By the way, for anybody who practices, who plays a bit, don't practice when you're tired. Because if you're in bad posture, that's when these injuries come in. So if it might be necessary for 
it'd be a good habit if you had a minute or two stretch before you started any practice anyway so that you again focus on I do Tom House throwing protocols for my shoulders. I focus on my shoulders, keep them set to take the pressure off my neck. I do a lot of work on my neck and I have a couple of minutes. I have different programs, but I have little exercise. If I'm rushing back out to the golf course, I'll tackle these areas as a priority over hitting golf balls because again, I want them to sit down and not cause any tension. So if you have problems with your neck, we don't want to obviously roll up, get tight, we definitely don't want to hit the golf ball with our head down in this position. We want to release the head. So we've got to go with, you know, Annika Sorenstein. If you're struggling with your neck, it's not good. You can keep an eye on the golf ball. I'm not telling you not, but don't be trying to keep your head down. I really didn't do a great job on that. I think I could have released it even more. So a perfect strike there. And as you can see, my head was releasing with the club head. It won't affect, it, would, it could actually make you a better golfer. But again, it takes the pressure off. This is not gonna do your neck any good. So release your head if you're struggling with your neck. Release your lower back by stepping forward if you're struggling. If you're struggling with your feet, your ankles, you can rotate them a little bit in different directions to help with the pressure and you can also step. Again, the stepping will help take the pressure off your feet as well. So that's not a bad idea as well to, to use the step in motion if you've got problems with your ankles or your knees. I had problems with my tennis elbow. It went away for me within a week of doing the backstroke. So what you tend to find with a lot of injuries, I was sore here, but it's either coming from your, the lower or above joint, so the one that you're sore at. Mine was coming from my shoulder. So now I spend a lot of time, as I said earlier, doing Tom House exercises, all sorts of, all sorts of funny motions. And there's one you can try at home, uh, just to get my shoulder loose, set back. The minute I did that, tennis elbow's gone away. Now I will say, I, I'm choosing my words wisely here. If you have wrist, arm, shoulder injuries, you are a moron if you're hitting off a mat. You're just a moron. It's not going to do, it's going to hurt. It's going to damage you. Do not hit off the mat. If you have to practice in a driving range, tee the ball up. You don't have to hit it off the actual mat. Tee it up and hit it with whatever club. Practice with your driver if you have to. Hitting off a mat, it doesn't, it's not realistic to golf anyway because it's, it, it, you get away with a lot of bad shots off a mat. Plus, it hurts. It will damn. If I, I know if I hit drivers off the deck off a mat, you know, 20, 30 drivers, I'll have to get physio to work out my arms because my wrists will lock up. Like I'll be soaring through my hands there. So don't hit off the deck. I, I did say you're a moron if you've done it. I have done it, obviously, and still to this day do it at times. But I'm very wary of there is an issue to hitting off a mat. Tee it up and play off the tee. On that, putting a heavy watch on your wrist is not a good thing either. A lot of the wrist specialists will tell you that weight is not doing you any favors. So, you know, don't have a heavy watch on your wrist. That's not gonna help things either. So again, always go to your physio. Remember, if you're sore in one place, it's probably coming from somewhere else. Do your exercise. Most of your program should be focused on those exercises. But when you get in the golf course, you will find movement more movement will generally release the area that get in trouble and, and stop you from compounding your, your, your injury and making it worse. So by stepping through or stepping back or releasing your head, there's lots of these things that will help. Restricting the movement generally is what causes the, the most injuries when it comes to golf.